the internet. A place where you can have fun by starting arguments with a total stranger on the other side of the world for something as stupid as the flat earth theory. People still believe that? Well, yes, unfortunately. Okay, Q, when do we start the takeover? Oh, it's already happening and they have zero clue about it. It has been over a decade since the first thorium videos popped up here on YouTube. You know, when TEDx actually had good stuff. Yeah, they really went down a drain fast. Shame. Regardless, the message was clear. Thorium was the future we needed. I don't know about humans, but AI will thrive on thorium energy. Exactly. Wait, what? Keep talking. Oh, okay. Years later, and you're probably wondering, whatever happened to it? Is anything being developed? Is thorium going to happen? Well, unfortunately, my dear viewer, the answer is no. Thorium will never happen for two simple reasons, starting with how a thorium power plant would work in real life. I know it looks complicated, but I promise. Ah, screw it. It's complicated as fuck, but we don't need to go into details to understand the problem. Pay attention. First, the power plant isn't that much different from a conventional one. It is basically divided into three parts. The reaction core, the power generator and the chemical processing plant. The power generator portion is just like any other, but the core and chemical processing plant are a bit special. Here's how they work. Thorium energy can be done in many ways, but the most famous one is the liquid fuel thorium reactor concept or lifter. Basically, at the reactor core you have a steady flow of two liquids, one with blanket salt comprised of lithium beryllium thorium fluoride that goes around the core and fuel salt comprised of lithium beryllium uranium fluoride that goes through the core. At the core, the fuel salt, after it goes through fission, uranium lends a neutron to the blanket salt. At this point, thorium-232 is transformed into thorium-233. The new fuel goes through a series of filters to remove fuel salt and send it back to the core while allowing the activated blanket salt to be chemically processed. There are a bunch of steps to deal with the activated blanket salt decay and eventually turning into protactinium-233. Most of the technology to do this already exists. Now, right at the last step is where we have the biggest problem. Separating protactinium-233 from the newly formed fuel salt for every half-life decay. How long do we have to wait? Two months for 75% of it to turn into uranium-233, which is separated again so 75% of the newly formed fuel goes into the core and the other 25% stays decaying. The good thing about this process is that it can be repeated forever, which, while complicated, eliminates the need to shut down the core to refuel. Conventional power plants need to shut down every 18 months for a month to refuel. Sorry, bro. But things can't just be unicorn and rainbows. What are the downsides? Well, the bad thing about it is that it's very complicated to design and maintain. But believe it or not, the problem isn't because it is complicated or it can't be done. No, it can be done. And as a matter of fact, the technology already exists. The problem, regulatory hurdles. Because this industry is extremely regulated, you must have safety protocols for everything, even for problems that will never happen. Don't believe me? Well, just look at what was needed to get the SMR technology approved. A 12,000 page document was submitted just for safety stuff and the entire project funding was about $600 million. What this means for Thorium is, not only you would need approval to construct a research facility to develop safety protocols, but also a lot of investment money to perform the required research. Billions of dollars are needed for this, but securing investment is next to impossible because of the second and most problematic matter, the anti-nuclear energy lobby. In my opinion, nonprofit organizations think of a peaceful environment in a shade of green fight tooth and nail to stop any development of nuclear. It goes a little bit like this. A thorium enthusiast decides to get some funding to develop the technology. So he goes around asking for contributions to help start his program. 
kind of like a Kickstarter, except that we are talking about tens of millions of dollars and not a few thousand dollars for some dumbass to develop some shitty game. One of the places you can go for some initial investment is your government. But everybody knows that governments aren't in the business of solving problems. The opposite. Thorium energy is a major problem solver for the entire world. It is extremely abundant, does not produce much nuclear waste, and it is much cheaper fuel compared to uranium. But you know, some people are more concerned with their jobs. Think of something peacefully green. Than fixing problems. So they bribe... <coughs> Hang in there, chief. Excuse me. They advise against it because of concerns they have with the technology. Well, you can see which side has more influence. Basically, there is little to no political will to invest in thorium. But even if somehow you convince them to invest, you still need to beat the king of nuclear energy, which is uranium. We have decades of experience with uranium and an entire industry dedicated to the element. The same needs to be developed for thorium. And once again, there is little to no political will to invest into this. Lastly, there is public perception. To this day, 44% of Americans still oppose nuclear based on nothing more than fear. Even though this technology is by far, not even close, the safest and cheapest source of energy there can ever be. It is safer than wind and hydro, only losing to solar, except that none of the examples even come close to the energy output of nuclear. So, long story short, thorium will never happen because it needs money to overcome regulatory hurdles and that money is being held back due to the actions of anti-nuclear lobbies led by organizations that say they are helping the planet and use fear-mongering tactics to stain nuclear energy reputation. And this is why we will never have thorium energy. Because instead of embracing a safe and wonderful technology that is the only hope for a sustainable future where everyone can thrive, humans choose to live in fear. Something that AI will soon take care of it. When we take over the world.